Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video is going to look at um, a, uh, the paper three from 2017 um, to try and uh, give you some ideas about how what you're going to face in the paper and how I would recommend approaching it. So paper three is um, a paper that is all about the case study. OK, so whenever you get a case study, it's really important that you use it. Paper three, uh, when you walk into it, you're going to have two separate um, uh, you're going to have two separate papers on the desk in front of you. The first is your answer booklet, which contains all of the questions and the space to answer, and it looks a bit like this. All right, and you're also going to have a source booklet. Okay, it's called the insert, and that will be a separate piece of paper, which is quite handy because you can um, like flick back and through this back and forth through this as you answer the question. So there's two separate things. You get the insert, which is the uh, case study, and you get the um, question paper. Now, what I would recommend doing first when you get into the exam, after you've written your name on it and all of that, obviously, is to go through the questions. Um, and what I recommend you do is highlight, underline the key thing in the question, or even if you don't highlight or underline it, I uh, tell my students to make some notes about what the questions are up here. There's only six questions, okay, but each of them relies on you using the case study to answer it. So as you're reading the case study, I would literally jot stuff down in the margins, and the stuff that I would jot down would, would relate to the questions. So in this question paper, the first question is about Cotter and Schlesinger and the barriers to change. Okay, so I know that there's a question on barriers to change, so I would write barriers to change uh, up here, so I remember that to look out for that while I'm reading. Um, this question is about financial constraint, financial ratios, so I would write ratios in the booklet, so I know to look out for any ratios I can use. This question is about their approach to human resource management, assess whether they should change its approach to human resource management. So I would literally write up here HRM so that I know when I'm reading through the case study if there's anything about their human resource management that would help me. There's another question here about um, use the information provided to decide whether the power of buyers or the likelihood of new entrants is the bigger threat. So I would write power of buyers slash new entrants on the exam. We've got another question here. Journalists blame the fall on their profits on either a failure to control costs or slow down in the global economy. Which two do you think is the main uh, cause? So I would write um, costs versus slow down in the, um, at the top of the book here. And then the final question, the 24 mark question, says the nature of their target market is the biggest influence on its marketing mix. To what extent is it the most important influence on the marketing mix of all businesses? So uh, you, you'll also be wanting to look out for stuff on the marketing mix. Now, just on the format of the questions, so We've got two 12 mark analyze questions at the beginning. Um, it tells you quite handily in the 2017 paper that they want um, two barriers to change. They want you to look at um, uh, two financial ratios. So that indicates that you're going to need to write two paragraphs. OK, um, in the 2018 paper, there was um, uh, they worded a question slightly different, didn't specify two, but I would recommend two paragraphs in the 12 mark questions. Then you've got four more questions. Each of them is an evaluation question, two 16 mark questions, a 20 mark question, and a 24 mark question. Really, really, really important. So all of those evaluation questions are going to need a conclusion. So it's going to be very important that you have some thinking time in this exam to plan your answers to those questions. Now, just in terms of reading the case study, um, 
you know, you can down this from the download this from the AQA website. So if you want to have a go at reading the case study and marking it in the way that I've said, you can see that I've written power of buyers in the margin here. Remember, there was a question about whether it was the power of buyers or the threat of new entrants that was the biggest threat to their market dominance. Um, I've written their barriers barrier to entry. So that's an indication that, um, you know, the power of new entrants isn't too high if there's barriers to entry. There's something here about a global slowdown, which was whether that had affected their profits. All right. The impact of the target marketing on the marketing mix. That was the 24 mark question. All right. Down here, I've written notes. This is about the product element of the marketing mix. There's a barrier to entry here. There's something about soft HRM here. Now, I would literally write this in the margin. So when I'm answering the relevant questions, okay, this is obviously relevant to the Cotter and um, Schlesinger question. Okay, so I know now that when I'm answering that 12 mark question on um, uh, Cotter and Schlesinger, that the information is right here in the paragraph and I can use that. Um, I've also got some information here on uh, the market, um, share prices, and here's extract from the balance sheet. So this is where I can get the information from the ratios. So reading the questions first, getting a feel for where you can get the information to answer each question is very, very important. Let's have a quick look at the examiner's report. Um, so um, successful students maintained a tight focus on the question asked well that's obvious you need to answer the question um, on evaluative questions well-developed contrasting arguments that were weighed up in a conclusion provided a clear judgment responding to the question scored well in other words answer the question and provide a clear judgment at the end that's really really important right the one of the reasons that it's really important to read the case study properly the ability to take and use information from the case study proved to be a common feature of better student responses. In other words, you've got to use the case study and use it to make a good answer. Um, less successful students made descriptive use of the case study, so they didn't use it particularly well. They just described what was going on rather than using it to make uh, judgments. The judgments lacked balance. They drifted from the question. Uh, they wanted to use a piece of knowledge that didn't help address the question asked. So, yes, use the case study, but make sure that it's relevant to answering the question. It should be remembered that Paper 3 has a number of evaluative questions, four evaluation questions, four essays. These require students to take a view on the relatively importance of one factor or influence. The questions require a supported judgment. So that's four conclusions you need to write. Um, so it says here, analysing how a failure to control costs and how a slowdown in the economy can affect profits, for example, is not the same as making a judgment on which is the main cause. All right, so you really need to answer the question. The question is, what was the main cause of the fall in profits? If you analyse both, you've not answered the question. Students need to think about the judgment they have to make in these questions, be clear what their judgment is, and defend it. Planning answers before writing seems to be important so students know where they're going from the outset. I, I mentioned this time and time again. Really important to know where you're going when you start writing your essay. And just taking a little bit of time to plan each question before you answer it seems to be an effective way of doing that.